Hi guys, today we're going to be looking at the game Square Mile. This game came out from Milton Bradley in 1962 and it is for two to four players. Here we'll give you a little bit better shot of the box here. The object of the game of Square Mile is you're going to be uh, developing land and uh, trying to resell it at a higher value and you're just going to continue doing this um, and trying to get the most amount of money and assets by the time the game ends. So let's take a look at it. Okay everyone, here we go. We'll go ahead and start with the game board over here. Over here, you've got a board that has got what are called tracks on it, and there's 16 different ones. And these are going to be properties that you're going to be able to build on. On top of that, for an advanced game, you have these other tracks that if you want to play a more advanced game, you can place these tracks on top of that and basically create your own board, which is pretty cool. You also have money over here. And in the beginning, everybody is going to start with $100,000. Now here's a whole bunch of the components over here, and I'm going to kind of go over what all these are as we're doing the game. Uh, but these are the different buildings over here. These are the roads and the bridges. These are track cards that are going to help you uh, place things. Over there on the top is the subdivisions. You've got the pawns over there. You've got uh, buildings that you're going to use to zone the properties. In the very beginning, what you're going to do is you're going to plan the properties, which I've already done, but I'll show you how I did it. First thing you're going to do is you're going to set up the railroad strip over here, and you're going to draw one of these planning cards from this big deck of cards over here. And so I had drawn this card, and it shows this is where the railroad is. So I went ahead and I placed the railroad across there. And what you're going to do is you're going to place four of these industry buildings alongside the railroad track like so. Up next is going to be the school, and so I had drawn this card. And this little block here shows where the school goes. And so I placed the school here, and then you're going to place houses adjacent to where the school is. And finally, you're going to go ahead and place the church. And I went ahead and I drew this card, and then I placed the church over there. So now the game is set up and ready to play. Now, on top of this, all the players are going to go ahead and receive one of these track cards for free. So let's just say I drew this card and my opponent drew this card. So this is going to give them one free track. So what will happen is everybody's going to go ahead and receive five pawns of one color. And let's just say player one is red. Since he's got this one, he'll go ahead and place one here. That's his free track. And let's say I'm blue. I will go ahead and place one here and that'll be my free track. Now the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to do what is called a sealed bid auction. Now depending on how many players there are, you're going to be able to bid on a certain amount of tracks. If there's a two player game, you'll be able to bid on four tracks. Let's just say I'm doing a two player game and the bidding I believe starts at $1,000 and it's a sealed bid. So what you'll do is you're just going to choose the track and then write down the amount. So I could say track die, I'll bid $2,000 on. And each person is going to bid on four. And so what will happen is the auctioneer, who are the banker, is will say, okay, did anybody bid on this? And let's just say the red, the red player said, yep, I bid on that, $8,000. So let's say we go to B and say, nobody bid on that. Then we'll go to C and say, did anyone bid on that? And let's just say both players both bid $1,000. Uh, if it's a tie, you're going to go ahead and rebid on it. And let's just say uh, the blue player ended up winning the auction, bid, say, $3,000. He'll go ahead and place his pawn over there. And it'll go ahead and continue on until each player has received four tracks. All right, so now each person is going to be receiving one free road. And once again, you'll go, draw one of these cards here. And this is gonna show you where the first road is gonna go. So, as, so right now we'll look at this and this is where the first road is gonna go. So we'll go ahead and place the road here. So now both players are gonna have an opportunity to place their free road. Uh, the only thing is it has to connect to uh, the road that it was on previously. So let's say the red player decides he's gonna place one over here. And this is a bridge and that's fine across the river and let's say say the blue player says okay i'm going to go ahead and place one over here and that will be their free road and now we go on to the next stage of the game and this is going to be the development on each person's turn uh you've got three different steps that you're going to be able to take number one you'll be able to build roads number two you'll be able to lay subdivisions and number three you'll be able to construct buildings so here right here we have the square mile value card and this is going to tell you how much the different pieces are and sections that cost. And also is going to tell you the different values of the undeveloped tracks. And also whenever you do the build up for the final sale. And it also is going to tell you how much things are going to cost as you are developing it. Right at the top it says filling swamp. Now there's a spot on the board in the bottom left corner that is a swamp area. If you decide to subdivide on it, you're going to have to pay $5,000 to fill the swamp up and then you'll be able to subdivide it. Now when it comes to developing, there's three different stages. There's going to be roads, and then once you have the whole property surrounded by the roads, then you're going to be able to do what is called a subdivision. After the subdivision, you will go ahead and be able to place the final building onto the development, which is going to finish it off. So let's go ahead and show you how it works. We'll go ahead and place a road over here, and anything that has a river on it, you're going to build a bridge piece. So this is going to be a bridge piece, and we'll go ahead and place it over here like so. 
So now, every time you build a road, it's going to increase the value of the development by $15,000. So right now, the development has $45,000 worth of road. The building is worth $12,000. So that is going to increase the value up to $57,000. Now, once you go ahead and finish it off with the last road, this is going to finish off all the roads, and now the property is going to be worth $75,000 if you decide to sell it. Now, after you build the roads, you're gonna go ahead and be able to build the subdivision, which is going to be this little tic-tac-toe type piece over here. This costs $25,000, but once you go ahead and add it, that is going to increase the value of the property to $125,000. The last step will be building the building that goes there. And for this, it's going to be the industrial building. There's the industrial building. Now, each building is going to be worth a different amount of money, depending on what you're building. For the school, the churches, and the houses, they're going to be worth $25,000, all the way up to the apartment buildings, which are going to cost $100,000. So let's go ahead and say that we decided to go ahead and buy the industrial building and place it. This is now going to go ahead and close off the development. Nobody will be able to uh, buy it, bid on it or anything. It's going to be out of the game. But you will be able to go ahead and sell it for the final value sale. For the houses, it's going to be $200,000 up to the apartments, which are going to be $300,000. So as you can see, the property value is going to go way up the more you develop it. All right, so now this person is going to be receiving one free road. And once again, you'll go, draw one of these cards here. And this is going to show you where the first road is going to go. So, I, so right now we'll look at this and this is where the first road is going to go. So we'll go ahead and place the road here. So now both players are going to have an opportunity to place their free road. Uh, the only thing is it has to connect to uh, the road that it was on previously. So let's say the red player decides he's going to place one over here. And this is a bridge and that's fine across the river. And let's say, say the blue player says, okay, I'm going to go ahead and place one over here. And that will be their free road. And now... We go on to the next stage of the game, and this is going to be the development. On each person's turn, uh, you've got three different steps that you're going to be able to take. Number one, you'll be able to build roads. Number two, you'll be able to lay subdivisions. And number three, you'll be able to construct buildings. Now, on your turn, you're going to pick one of those three things to do, and you can't like mix them. You can't build roads and subdivisions in the same turn. So after everyone's gone ahead and paid the money for all the tracks that they've purchased, we're going to go on and go to the development stage. So let's just say the red players first, and this is going to give him an opportunity to sell any property or development that he has. This property, it is worth $8,000 plus the road is fifteen, dollars so right now it's worth $23,000. So let's just say he says, okay, I'm going to go ahead and sell this, and he goes ahead and collects $23,000 from the bank. The next thing he decides to do uh, is build roads. That's going to be the first step. Now, he can build as many roads as he wants to so long as he can afford it. So let's say, okay... Player one decides, okay, I'm going to go ahead and build a road here and a bridge here. Roads cost $10,000, so he goes ahead and builds this, pays $10,000 to the bank, and then he goes ahead and he builds the bridge, and he goes ahead and places this over here, over this river, and now the development is going to be worth $75,000. Now, the third thing he can do is he can buy a tract. Uh, as long as it is unknown. So let's just say he says, okay, I want to go ahead and try to buy this track. Now this is going to be an open auction and it's going to start at uh, whatever the market value is. So right now with 8,000 and the road here being 15,000, market's going to be at $23,000. So let's just say both players bid and Blue ends up winning the property. He ends up bidding 25. So what will happen is Blue will go ahead and purchase it and then Red is going to go ahead and say, okay, and it's going to bid on another property. He's going to have to get something. So let's just say he decides he's going to bid on this one, and he bids $8,000. He ends up getting it, so he'll go ahead and pay the bank the $8,000. He'll become the new owner. And so that will end his turn, and then it will go on to the next player. And so that's basically just the game. You're going to be developing land, selling land, getting money, and just kind of repeating the process. And then at the very end, everyone's going to go ahead and count up all of their money and their assets. Um, and this is going to mean any properties that are not fully developed, you're going to go ahead and total all those up. And whoever has the most amount of money and assets is going to win the game. And that, folks, is Square Mile. So my final thoughts on Square Mile. Well, this is one of those games that kind of helped signify the end of the roll and move era that was real <laughs> popular back in the day. Uh, this was just another one of those games uh, that Milton Bradley made that was outside of the box. Um, and I think it is a good game. Uh, I did get a little bit confused with the rules, though. The one thing we discovered is, like, you can actually sell a property, if you say you get $125,000 for it, and then rebuy it on the same turn because your opponents may not have enough money. And that, that was kind of like something that happened with, 
my wife and I, when we were playing it, it looks like to me is that you have to kind of like watch how much money you have because if someone tries to do that, the very least you can do is you can just try to bid them up and make them have to spend more than they want to spend. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of strategy in this game between having to build the roads and the bridges and depending on what you want to subdivide it and how far you want to take it and everything and buying and selling and buying and selling and building and everything like that. It's a cool little game. I like it. The components are pretty nice in this game for a game from the 60s. There's a lot of stuff in here. Um, and uh, I have a game called Prize Property and that kind of reminds me a little bit of it, uh, but it's a little bit more detailed just because it's a land development game, which <laughs> that's pretty pretty cool idea for a game. This would be a kind of a cool game. I would love to see them re-release this. I'm kind of curious how they would do it if they ever decided to. Um, but yeah, it's a good little game. Um, I think it probably goes for about $25 or so on eBay now. Um, but if you kind of like games where you have to plan things and have some strategy to it and you're kind of having to balance between the money and the buildings and what you want to sell for and everything, it's a good little game. All right, guys, that's my review of Square Mile. We'll see you later. Keep on gaming.